Hello everyone! Uh, a most exciting thing just happened in the chess world, but I'm sure you already heard about it as uh, you all follow what goes on in the chess world. Uh, the 13-year-old the international master from Germany, Vincent Kemmer, uh, just won the Grand K Chess Open Tournament. Uh, it's, uh, it's a tournament that uh, has been going on simultaneously uh, as the Grand K Chess Classic, only it started a few days before that. Uh, so uh, today was the final round and this is a game from the final round of this tournament. So Vincent Kamer, uh, 2400 something international master from Germany, uh, he is 13, uh, has the black pieces against Richard Rapport. Uh, the game is extremely exciting and the result young Vincent achieved in this tournament is, is, is just spectacular. So by winning this event, uh, he qualified to enter the Grand Chess Classic next year. So winning this event this year and uh, next year he will face the big boys in the Grand Chess Classic. And it's not not, not really uh, a small achievement. There were almost 800 players there. Uh, tons of grandmasters and uh, some, of, some of the grandmasters were even rated uh, uh, above 2700. So I will show you all of the opponents he played against, but first let's check out this game as it's uh, quite a spectacular game for, for the last round of this tournament. So facing an incredibly strong opponent, Richard Rapport, and with the black pieces. Uh, Rapport opens with d4, uh, we have d5, c4, and e6. So the queen's gambit declined. Knight to c3, knight to f6, uh, and bishop to g5. Uh, here we have bishop to e7. And I just want to tell you a short story here. Uh, when we were, when I was uh, playing uh, at a tournament, not at a tournament, but it was a club against club. Uh, we, I went there with my chess club. Uh, Dodo, uh, Dodo the engine boy, as you know him from my streams. Uh, he had this position with the black pieces. He played knight to d7. Uh, his opponent played c captures on d5, uh, e captures on d5, and then his opponent played knight captures on d5. Uh, with the idea that he just won a pawn, that of course the knight on f6 is pinned. Uh, Dodo simply played knight captures here, and uh, now his opponent <laughs> realized uh, that he just lost the game. And here, uh, but uh, his opponent uh, did think for some 15 minutes before actually capturing this pawn. Uh, he did grab it, Dodo simply played knight captures here, and now you see the problem. If you capture the queen, simply bishop to b4 check, and white is lost. Uh, queen d2, simply only move, uh, bishop captures, king captures, and then king captures bishop on d8. Uh, black won a piece, a completely winning position. Uh, but, uh, okay, in the game, bishop to e7 was played, uh, e3, uh, h6 now, bishop to h4, castles, uh, rook to c1, knight b to d7, these are all standard uh, moves for this variation, c captures on d5, e captures on d5, bishop to d3, c6, uh, bishop to g3 now, rook to e8, and h3, uh, bishop to b4, preparing knight to e4, uh, knight to f3, knight to e4 now, and bishop to f4, not allowing uh, the knight to capture the bishop on g3. Uh, we have c5 uh, here, a rapport castles, and now bishop captures on c3, b captures on c3, and knight to b6. Uh, and here, since knight uh, came to b6, he no longer controls the e5 square, uh, rapport decides uh, to go for knight to e5. Also an idea was knight to d2 to go for some exchanges in the center. Uh, but uh, Rapport uh, does need a win to, to, uh, to qualify for actually winning this tournament. Uh, so he, he can't really uh, afford to go for, for some drawing lines. Uh, knight to e5 uh, and now f6, kicking away the knight. Knight to g4 and now c4, uh, kicking the bishop back, bishop to b1 and now h5. And this is the first critical moment of the game. Uh, here uh, Rapport played knight to h2. Uh, what, he, what he should have gone for is knight to h6 check. Uh, now after g captures, only then play queen captures on h5, and here uh, white, white would have uh, an excellent attack as f3 is coming, so you would dislodge this knight from e4, this would open up your bishop from b1. So after black starts to organize the defense, something like rook to e7, now comes f3, uh, knight to g5, now h5, h4, king going the knight even further, and after knight to h7 you can go g4, and uh, white, white is definitely starting the attack here. Uh, but in the game, uh, after h5, uh, Rapport didn't go for knight to h6 check, he decided to give up uh, a piece differently. He played knight to h2, and now after uh, Vincent played g5, now he decided to play queen captures on h5, so he decided to give up the bishop on f4 instead of the knight. Uh, we have uh, pawn captures on f4, uh, and now f3. Uh, now you either move the knight, uh, or you keep the knight, and... Uh, 
uh, or you either give up the knight or move the knight and allow queen to h7 check. Uh, Vincent allows it. He plays knight to d6. Uh, queen to h7 check, king to f8, uh, and now queen to h6 check. King to e7 and uh, queen to g7 check. And here's a very good question for you. Look at this position. The king is on e7. So what do you play here? Uh, imagine you were defending this position as black. Would you go knight to f7, making some room for your king? Uh, or would you play king to e6? Uh, a very interesting choice. Uh, in the game, Vincent played king to e6. So going <laughs> uh, going for a walk with the king. Uh, rook f to e1, threatening to push e4 or e captures on f4, open up lines. Uh, the king is on e6. It's a, it's a perfect position to attack. Uh, rook to e7, attacking the queen. Uh, and now queen to g4, and not allowing the, the, the king to escape via d7. Uh, f5 now, bishop captures on f5 with check, knight captures, and uh, uh, now you now you either push e4, pin the knight, and threaten to open the e-file this way, or you go queen to g6 check, followed by capturing capturing the knight on f5. Uh, Rapper played queen to g6, and this comes with check, king to d7 moves, and now queen captures on f5, capturing the knight. Uh, king to c6, and now queen captures on f4. So, uh... Rapport is still down a whole piece, uh, but he does have a, an extremely strong center here, and the king is awkwardly placed on c6. Uh, but is there compensation for the piece? Uh, bishop to e6 by Vincent, developing a piece, preparing to bring the rook into the game, as uh, once you develop, develop those pieces, the, <laughs> the extra piece will really come in handy. Uh, e4, now comes queen to g8, uh, queen to h6, and now king to, king to c7. Uh, here, king to h1. Uh, white, white, white can't really uh, move the queen off of the h file as bishop captures on h3 would be would be a pretty nice move for black. So first king to h1, not allowing any ideas. Uh, rook to f8 and now uh, rook to e2, uh, protecting protecting the g pawn and maybe preparing to double up rooks on the b file if Vincent allows it. Uh, rook to h7 and now this queen no longer has really anywhere to go. Uh, only square is e3 and d2, but none of the squares are are that good. Uh, queen to d2 was played, and now comes king to b8. Uh, queen to g3 seems like a, a reasonable idea, but uh, Vincent sees that his position is excellent, and first he improves it even more. Uh, so king to b8, and now rook c to e1, <coughs> preparing uh, it to either push the pawn or to open up the e file. Uh, so pawn captures on e4, uh, f captures on e4, and now bishop to d7. Uh, rook to f2, uh, rook to e8, and now queen to f4 check. Uh, king moves to a8, now comes knight to f3, and rook to f8 now. Uh, attacking the queen, queen has to go all the way to h2, and now knight to a4. And this knight to a4 is a powerful move that, that really locks in the position for black. Uh, it's uh, threatening to win the c3 pawn. If the c3 pawn is gone, then, then white is simply lost. Uh, the only thing white really has for this piece uh, is this strong center. Another thing the knight on a4 does, it doesn't allow uh, doubling of, of the rooks on the, on the b file. You can always go rook to b1, but you can never go rook to b2. So uh, definitely an excellent piece, and it will be used in a, co in a combination later on. Uh, so rook to e3, defending the c3 pawn, and now a6. Still no, not rushing anything, Vincent simply improves his position, uh, making room for the king so no back, back rank ideas can happen in the future. Uh, and here it's it's extremely hard uh, to find a move for white. Uh, you can't really push e5, you would like to push e5, e6, e7, uh, but if you push e5 then this knight is coming to b6, you're, you're allowing this knight an excellent square on d5, and uh, although the knight is annoying on a4, it would be even more annoying on d5. And another thing, you're allowing this bishop to come to c6, uh, it will be extremely ex an extremely powerful piece. Uh, another thing, uh, aside from e5, uh, you don't really have a move here. Uh, if you try something like rook f to e2 to maybe to maybe remaneuver the rooks, uh, then after black makes a move, queen g6, you could maybe play rook to e1, maybe go for the go for the b1 file or g1. Uh, then the knight is coming to b2, and then after this knight comes to d3, it will be a, a, a great position for black. So uh, all of this uh, in mind and probably low on time, a rapper plays queen to e5, but queen to e5 is now definitely a, a move that allows black to finish the game nicely. Uh, bishop captures on h3. Uh, so what do you do here? 
Uh, Rupert played king to g1, and king to g1 is the strongest move. If you capture the bishop, then you get a rook captures on h3. This comes with check. You have to block rook to h2, uh, and now rook to g3 wins the game. There's the terrible threat of rook captures on f3, followed by rook to g1 checkmate. Uh, you'd have to block this, queen to d5, attacking black's queen, but black will simply get the queen out of the attack. Uh, the threat is still there, and after white makes a move, you will simply win the game. Now rook h3 check, captures, captures, king g1, uh, queen to g3 check, and now you win a piece with check, and it's all over. So, uh, a bishop captures an h3, excellent move, definitely a, win a winning move, king to g1, of course you can't capture it, and now uh, rook to g7 with a triple, uh, triple threat on g2. Uh, knight to h4 defending, but uh, rook captures on f2. Uh, king captures on f2, you remove the one of the defenders of the g2 pawn. Uh, rook captures, uh, knight captures, and queen captures on g2. So now black does have two pieces for the rook, but it's it's uh, it's completely winning game. Uh, king to e1, uh, here queen to f1 was played, king to d2, and now bishop to g4. Here Vincent is threatening queen to d1 checkmate, and uh, black uh, white doesn't have a move here. Uh, if you try something like uh, rook to g3, maybe make room for king on e3 to escape, it uh, doesn't really work, queen to f2 check, king moves, and now comes, uh, check this out, uh, queen to b2 checkmate. Uh, look at this knight on a4, protecting this queen, the bishop is uh, guarding uh, d1 square, uh, it's a very nice checkmate, you know. Haven't seen a, a dark knight this useful on a4 uh, since Bobby Fischer's game of the century, probably. So, after bishop to g4, uh, Rapport tried one more idea, he played queen to e8 check, uh, king moves, and now queen captures on a4. Now the queen from a4 is guarding uh, the d1 square, but uh, here queen to f2 was played by Vincent, and uh, it was in this position uh, on move 51 that Richard Rapport resigned the game. Uh, what would follow, of course, if you block with the rook, queen simply captures, and if you move the king, simply, again, queen captures, and... Uh, Okay, you do have, you still do have your strong center for for Black's bishop, uh, but after b5 and you move the queen, b4 simply shatters White's center, and there's really nothing to do here for White. This comes with check. Uh, White would win this game very, e Black would win this game very easily. So yeah, uh, after this uh, queen f2 check, Rapport resigned the game and a brilliant victory. Uh, for for 13 year old international uh, master Vincent Kmar from Germany, and uh, especially winning winning a tournament of this magnitude with uh, almost 800 players, like I said, uh, is unimaginable. Especially with a game like this, this is this is a spectacular game with the black pieces against uh, a monster like Richard Rapport. And I did prepare for you a list of all of the all of the players he faced. So this is uh, from round one to round nine. These are all the players he faced. So as you can see, okay, maybe some of, maybe the only, there, I mean, okay, uh, the, his first opponent was rated 2087, his second 2200, uh, but then you have 2660, 2148, 2503, 2510, 2588, 2604, and lastly in this game, uh, Richard Rapport, um, 2715. So out of the nine players he faced, uh, five of them were grandmasters, and uh, f out of those five grandmasters, he hasn't lost a single game. So out of nine games, uh, seven wins and two draws. This is this is simply incredible. And uh, so with eight points out of nine, uh, he's the he's the sole uh, winner uh, in first place. Uh, I, I believe there were three players with seven and a half points out of nine. Uh, so Anton Korobov being one of them, and I think Anton Korobov uh, just recently uh, also had like half a point less than Ivan Charic in the European Individual Championship. So uh, Anton Korobov, an amazing player, always you know always in there uh, uh, at the top, almost winning it. But I'm sure he will start winning it very soon. And I believe Alexei Shiro also had seven and a half out of nine, and one more player, but uh, I, I can't, really can't remember uh, who it was. But yeah, uh, Vincent Kamer uh, and uh, the, the, the quote above the board, uh, Peter Leko saying uh, even Magnus would be happy with 8 out of 9. Um, 
uh, Peter Leko is uh, uh, the official commentator of the Grand Chess Classic with Jan Gustafsson, and he's actually uh, the coach of young Vincent Kamar. So he was extremely happy he won this, and uh, now he will he will start coaching him and preparing him for for next year uh, when he will be participating in the Grand Chess Classic, where he will probably face uh, Magnus Carlsen and all the other uh, great beasts of chess. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, f f uh, feel free to congratulate Vincent Kamer using uh, any any means uh, possible, as this is this is an incredible result for for, for such a young player. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say it's like when Bobby Fischer won uh, won the USA Championship, uh, as there were some Im impressive players uh, there, but you know, it's uh, you know almost, uh, ma but maybe maybe even so. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Josip Kuprestanin and Amadeus Kostik for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, with another interesting game. Thank you all.